This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody in the big red letters, it's Alex in the big white letters and small white letters. It's the Ramble. That's where we are. We keep going until midnight tonight. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fine little program in which we have maybe 10 listeners and five callers. And that's it. You know, it's a very simple, simple show coming from my lovely apartment here in New York City in Harlem, of all places. Uh, and uh, if you if you didn't uh, see, did you ever see the movie uh, New Jack City? Yeah. Well, you know a place called the Carter, which was that big apartment house that they take over and make into a big uh, uh, cr- meth lab or crack lab. Yeah, crack lab. And uh, it's Denzel Washington is in it. That's this apartment house. And when he says in the picture, he shows a, a layout of the of the apartment house. He says. Here's where we're gonna build the meth lab, and he points to our kitchen window. So this apartment was the meth lab in New Jack City, (laughs) okay? Just thought I'd pass that little bit of information along to you. Hey, listen, we got to uh, we got to go to our uh, our uh, uh, citizen panel here. Well, not our citizen panel. What we do is we on uh, on. Uh, Wednesday nights, sometimes Thursday next month, I guess, we go to this guy, one of our f- the people who is most loved of all the people on GabNet, Phil Meyer. Hello, Philip. Hey, it's uh, been an exciting week. Has it been an exciting, why has it been an exciting week? Well, uh, you know, you start yeah. off. You know what you do is you start off immediately with the news stories rather than saying hi and hanging out for a little bit. You know, and that's the way oh, I prefer to hi. do it. I don't want to get into all that service. <laughs> well, you know, you know uh, on Saturday I photographed uh, twenty. Uh, what do they call those things? MMA matches, mm-hmm. and that was fun. Mm-hmm. I had a good time doing that mm-hmm. today. I got my COVID booster. I got mine too. Today? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And and we're still alive to talk about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, we were down there as soon as we heard it. We were, I said to Marjorie, you know, you're not working on Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday. Let's go down. Do it. So we went up to the right Aid up here where we normally go and, and got it. Got our booster oh. shot. Well, I. In fact, uh, in fact I, that people don't believe me. Well, wait a minute. Can I roll up my sleeve high enough? Oh, absolutely. Let me see. Can I get it up? Look there? at those. Look at those muscles. It, it, <laughs> wait a minute. Is the bandage still there? I think. Yeah, it's you've go- been working out. I think it's gone. Yeah. I think it's gone. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it isn't. I just. It's so far up that I don't know if I can get my. My. Uh, 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 uh. I don't stretch your sleeve. Well, anyway, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, they gave me a they gave me a new card, you know. So, uh, oh, oh, they gave you a new card. They didn't give us one, but you yeah. see, we have in New York State, we have these things called <clears throat> do this Excelsior passes. And if you go to your Excelsior pass and mm. you go there, see there it says Bennett Schwarzman. See, and then yeah. it goes up, and then I go vaccination details. And it gives me all three that I've done so far, and I imagine my fourth will show up eventually there. So, yeah. Well, so uh, that's what we show. You know. You know, we're we're vaccinated, uh, and hopefully this new strain will be weaker than previous ones. Well, I think what's going to happen, okay, I, I think they should stop calling it the second booster shot, the third booster shot, the fourth booster shot. Uh, they should just call it the latest booster shot because what do we do every year? We get a new flu shot, right? Yeah. Right. Although you know, some people uh, you know wear those booster shots uh, as a badge of honor. You know, yeah. I got my booster shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we're going to have to get a booster every year, or maybe every six months. You know. Yeah. So if that's the case, so be it. I'm there. You know, it takes it takes a, a couple of minutes to get the shot. 
doesn't hurt particularly, and uh, you're in and out of there, right? Yeah. I felt a little sting today, but nothing, nothing bad. Marjorie didn't feel anything. Well, yeah. they asked me uh, when I went in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which one did you have? I told them Pfizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, you know, did you have any reaction to any other the, the other shots? And I said, yeah, I thought I had a stroke after the second shot. Mm -hmm. she, says, okay. <laughs> okay. she says, says to me, okay, uh, you won't have to wait the 15 minutes uh, after, after you take the shot. <laughs> you so they were going to make you wait? Me? They were going to make you wait 15 minutes? Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. just like the, the other shots. But if you hadn't had any reactions, uh, you didn't have to wait in the waiting room with yeah, the rest yeah. of the hoi polloi. Yeah. Well, I, you know, so I we got the shot, and it was simple. And uh, everybody, if you're over 50, uh, go down and get them, okay? Yeah. Now, um, uh, the other thing that I have to be very happy about is I, every every time I have to go to the urologist. Yeah. Right? Number one, the urologist is my least favorite urologist. I mean, least favorite doctor, okay? Yeah. Because he's going to do... I thought you like this guy. No, wait a minute, let me finish. Let me yeah. finish. You uh -huh. Never let me finish. You always try to jump before I tell my what I got to say. Yeah. I don't like urologists. I found them, by and large, to be the weirdest bunch of people I've ever had to deal with in my life. Okay? And they're all, for the most part, terribly unpleasant. I found a gem of a guy. I mean, this guy is just the best there is. I got to tell you. He's wonderful. And, uh, in fact, um, 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 what, what's his first name? I can't remember his first name now. <laughs> Fingers. Huh? Fingers. No, fin <laughs> yeah. Fingers. I just want to say his name because if you live in New York, this this is the guy for you. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is not an advertisement for him. I'm doing an endorsement of this guy. Uh, All right. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me get the phone numbers here and let me go to uh, uh, over here to... Uh, uh, contacts. It's Dr. Vapnik, but I just want to get his first name so you don't call the wrong Vapnik. Not like there are very many others. Yeah. But it's Dr. Uh, um, because, you know, you always call him Dr. So-and-so and you never remember what the last name is, right? Uh, yeah. But it's uh, TV. There we go. Jonathan Vapnik. V-A-P-N-E-K. V-A-P-N-E-K. And this guy has just been a, a gem for me. Yeah. He oh he said from the beginning, I'm never going to do any procedures I don't feel you absolutely have to have, okay? Because I had another doctor who every time, they always found blood, a little bit trace of blood in my urine. And when they did, this one doctor would say, time for another cystoscopy, yeah. right? You know, and I just, so I, that, uh, I got to hate that guy terribly. Well, this guy doesn't do that. He doesn't suddenly go jumping in and, and giving me, a, he didn't give me a, a, a what do you call it? A, what do they call those things when they puncture your prostate and get some stuff? A biopsy. Biopsy, he, yeah. He, uh, I'm very bad at words these days. Uh, the biopsy, he won't, he wouldn't, def, he said, I don't want to go to a biopsy till I feel you need one. And when I needed one, he did it. And when he did it, he found cancer. And when he found cancer, he sent me to the best doctor in New York. Well, the guy who worked on Rudy Giuliani, I don't know if that makes him the best doctor in New York, but he puts the seeds in you and all that kind of stuff. So this guy, this doctor literally saved my life. Okay, yeah. and I gotta thank him for that. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm, I'm terrorized by having to go every year, or, or in this case, months, not, nine, this time it was nine months. Yeah, oh. this time it was nine months. And uh, because they do a PSA test, which is a test to see if there's any kind of cancer going on in your system or suspicion of cancer. It doesn't necessarily mean you have it. It just means there's something not exactly right. Okay. Well, they're monitoring you because yeah. you had cancer. That's right. And because you had an operation like you did, he had his prostate removed. Right. Uh, he still weighs the same. But they <laughs> <laughs> the, he had his prostate removed. And... Uh, uh, mine was not the same kind of thing. My thing was radiation and seeds being put in my prostate. And uh, so tell them, with no prostate, uh, what is your PSA number? It should be zero. Uh -huh. uh, no detectable uh, PSA. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, no detectable PSA. 
Right. Oh, it's supposed to be zero. Well, what is it? Well, less less than one. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my, I my I so I went and I got my I went into him and I he checked everything because I was worried about things like I was having pain when I peed and things like that and I figured maybe there was something really wrong with me. He says, Nah, that's probably because you have those seeds implanted in you and it, it it's it's going to be a constant irritation to you. Here's how you modify it, but there's nothing we can do much about that. He said, Are you watering those seeds? Yeah, no, I'm not watering them. <laughs> but then he stuck his finger up my new you know where and said, "Oh, your prostate's flat like it should be after the seeds." And now I've got a flat prostate. I used to have a nice round walnut-shaped prostate, mm -hmm. right? Now it's a flat one. But everything in my life has gone flat, so why not that? So no, then, that's then classic, he, not then flat. He, he checked for the blood in the urine. Okay, this is how thorough this guy is. And he goes, oh, you, you, you had a trace of blood in your urine when we put the dipstick in. So I looked under a microscope and uh, basically uh, nothing, <laughs> you know, there's nothing there. It's just some kind of little bit of gazorchness in there. And he said, it's, you know, it's, you're, you're always going to show up with a dipstick with blood in your urine. So is everybody enjoying this story? Of course. Uh, anyway. The waiting room, so, first half but, hour. No, but he... he uh, you know, he, he always makes me feel good about it. He doesn't make me feel bad about it. He doesn't instill terror in me or try to try to pad the uh, the bill, you know, by saying yeah. you need uh, you need this or you need that or maybe we should do a, a cystoscopy on you or whatever. In case people don't know what a cystoscopy is, I won't labor you with what it is, but they stick a scope up your penis. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel good. It's not it, one of the more pleasurable things you want to do. Okay. It's, uh, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe the guy only likes to give you a biopsy when it's on sale. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, you know. Well, you get two bi you get two biopsies for one. The price of yeah. one at Costco. Yeah. Well, no, he went in there, did a biopsy on me, and they found some uh, cancer. Uh, yeah. One was stage seven, you know, or whatever they call it, Gleason seven. Gleason seven. That's pretty high. Yeah, but that was just one segment, and it's all the different oh. segments together, and it was a combination, whatever. I had an intermediate. Yeah, it's like three, five, or. I asked him yesterday. He said, you you had basically what we call either a low to intermediate case, okay? Yeah. So anyway, so every year, I every well, six months or nine months now, I get this PSA test, and it has to come back. And if it goes up, as Phil knows, because he had a scare once, they go bananas and said we better check and see why this is so he you know sends takes my blood he says i'll let you know tomorrow he doesn't let me know tomorrow at like five in the afternoon right he lets me know at a quarter of nine in the morning well okay he, he wants to fuck your day up if... which woke me up and i played hit the buttons wrong on my phone and i see it's dr vapnik and I press the numbers wrong on my phone, and I completely lose him. And I'm going, I want my, I want my results. You know, last time he emailed me. This time he's calling me. Maybe it's something horrible. Anyway, I called the nurse in the the front desk, and I said, I got to talk to Doctor Vapnik. He just called me. I'm calling him right back. She said, We'll check. She then goes to him. I guess comes back and says, He's on a he's on a phone on another call right now. But he wanted me to tell you. No detectable PSA. Nice. Boy, nice. did I breathe a sigh of relief. Because now yeah. all the things that I asked him about, the problems with the ping and the thing and the this and the that, uh, was all taken care of, you know? And I'm, I guess, okay. You know, I was worried about it. I was worried that this was a sign of something bad, and it wasn't, you know, so. Yeah, well, you know. Here uh, I am, folks, alive and well. Yeah, well, I I was for about a year and a half no detectable PSA. Then all of a sudden, uh, they gave me a test, and mm -hmm. uh, and there was. Mm -hmm. So uh, they did another test, st still the same result. So I had to take seven weeks of radiation daily. They probably uh, should have sent you in for one of those cyber knives because that's only five. That's what I had, only five. Yeah. Well, uh, th there's no PSA. I mean, there's no prostate. So yeah. they're irradiating the area. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, and even though uh, there's no prostate, they still call it prostate cancer. So 
at, at, at this point today, after I got the uh, uh, vaccination or, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, inoculation, I uh, went uh, up downstairs to the lab and I said the doctor had ordered a PSA for me. So they drew blood. Uh, I peed in the cup. And, you know, as I as I left the uh, uh, the vaccination area, I, I used the I used the restroom. Mm -hmm. And then I get down to the lab. And, and they I ask said, you for pee, and you can't go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, I gave them a little. <laughs> I've learned how to always reserve a little before I go off to the urologist. Okay. Because yeah. they're always, always, they're, I didn't know they were going to ask. When I was younger, I had more of a problem peeing in the cup on cue than I do yeah. now. I don't yeah. know why. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's the radiation. Yeah, well, I, here's keeping my fingers crossed. When do you get the results? Tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, most likely. I mean, I could, uh, I could probably uh, go on now. Well, maybe uh, well, if you, you know, go on I, now and you get the results and they're bad, then we're going to be depressed for the rest of the uh, show. You know, it is what it is. If it's if if there's detectable cancer, then they give me a shot every six months. The of hormones, something. hormones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, but you know uh, the thing is, I like was just, Caitlyn Jenner. I was just really happy that you know that that everything's uh, fine. And by the way, this is yeah. two years that I've had yeah. undetectable. And I read online that if you're undetectable for two years, chances are you're okay. You're out of the woods. You can almost consider yourself cured. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm trying to check in to oh, it it, it knows my name. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it, Quest or what is it? Uh, no, this is the Kaiser. Kaiser. Uh, yeah. Yes. If you did Your messages, no, 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 uh, no results yet. Yeah, I would say that would probably be the case because you know overnight yeah, was, is when they do them. Four o'clock, my time. Yeah, but I did it. Uh, I did it Monday morning and Tuesday morning. Calls me up at a quarter of nine and says, "No detectable." Well, you know? I uh, I had the appointment for ten thirty this morning. Uh huh. And I had two appointments before my store opened in, uh, to look at a job and go to mm -hmm. measure another one. And so as I was leaving that, I got a phone call and I'm talking to, I'm talking to somebody from my office mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I drove to my office instead of going to Kaiser and getting the shot. So, uh, this afternoon when I left work, I went over to Kaiser and I said, uh, he says, did you have an appointment? I said, yeah, 1030 this morning. Mm -hmm. and here it was a little after four. Yeah. So uh, he said, OK, man, well, you know, here, just here, took yeah. here's hoping you stay in the undetectable club. Oh, yeah. By the way, our numbers have kept going down as we've talked about this. And, yeah, well, and, well, that's, and, that's because everybody's going to pee. <laughs> and fuck all of you. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Fuck all of you. I don't care. Well, uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna miss our new game, you know, on the uh, uh, what, what do they call it? The uh, Oscars. I, I don't know about this new game, but inform me what this new game well, is. Well, you, you've heard, you know, as you grew up, you heard of rock paper scissors, right? Yeah, yeah no, uh, we're not gonna do this bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on. Because I'm not hitting my camera. Okay, you don't have to. I came up with an idea. Okay. Uh, okay, so they came up rock paper scissors. So uh, Will Smith uh, decides that he's going to play the game. Oh, it's Chris uh, Rock. Rock. It's Chris right. Rock, paper, scissors. Right. Yeah. right. So he goes, rock, paper, slap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Well, that yeah. was, uh, it was an unfortunate incident that happened. And, and it turns out now, everybody kept asking the question, why didn't they just throw Will Smith out of the Oscars for doing that? I, I don't think they... It, it kind of hit them. No, they said uh, they said they did. They went. Oh, up he to wouldn't him, leave. That's right. I read him, something. They asked him to leave, and he wouldn't leave. And I, yeah. I'm sure that what they didn't want to do was create a big problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they got rid of him, got him to leave, yeah, then he he was asked to leave. But if he said no, I'm not going. I'm not going. And they tried to like a you know security guards pick him up and take him out. Yeah. That might get on the air, and that would and, and that would just be more of a disturbance than if they yeah. just said, "Okay, well, you just stay there." Plus, he might have slapped them. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, yeah. uh, it, it, nobody brings this up. Okay, 
in all this discussion, and by the way, this discussion is frivolous discussion. You know, we've got the thing going on in Ukraine. We've still mm -hmm. got COVID as a problem because it's rearing its ugly head again. All right, not for us. Not for us. We're we're <laughs> we're vaccinated, but uh, uh, but but this is all anybody's talking about. So we'll talk about it here for a few moments. All right. Here's the one thing nobody brings up. And I t it's the reason why this incident happened in the first place. And uh, it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that Will Smith had a hard on for Chris Rock. The, the fact of the matter is that in every other Oscar ceremony, how is the seating? They're all sitting in seats in aisles, right? With aisles, right? Oh, these, there, there are tables, they right? put Yeah, what they did is they took out the front seats and put some tables down to make it a little cozier for the people who were, I don't know, up for the big Oscars, okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact was that um, uh, this room here is about, I would say, uh, I don't know how many feet long, maybe maybe 20 feet long, maybe longer, a little longer. Yeah. I'm probably closer to that this wall over here than he You're was. You're talking about your studio? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, than, he, than he was to Chris Rock. Yeah. Okay. In other words, basically, if you look at it, there was a long shot of it. He was just about 15 feet away from Chris Rock. He just mm -hmm. had to walk over to the stage, walk up one step, okay, and then slap him. Now, yeah. if this had been the old configuration of the Oscars, he would have had to perhaps be in the, either the front aisle or the, the aisle in back of him and peek, go saying to everybody as he would walk to the stage to slap him, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and then walk up about five or six steps and then slap him. So, well, I guess he wasn't in the cheap seats. Well, no, but what I'm saying is that it was the way they created the seating that made the stage so accessible to Will Smith. I'm sorry, you 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 know, uh, I've been to a number of comedy shows. And by the way, by the way, I'm not blaming that as the reason. I'm saying that that's the reason it was. It, it, so it, it's it, the reason he thought to do it is because he was so close. Well, I think he thought to do it because uh, he was angry and he just didn't seem to be able to control himself. You know. Uh, be that as it may, what I'm saying is if those seats were there and there were steps to go up, he would have just sat there in the audience yelling, keep keep your, if, uh, don't say my wife's name coming out of your fucking mouth or whatever he said, you know? Well, uh, uh, I, I, I'd say uh, you keep Trump's name out of your expletive mouth. <laughs> yeah. But uh, here's the point. Here's the point. I mean, that that's what I'm saying. It just made it easier for him to do that. Uh, okay. I, okay. I, I, to do I the slap. That, it, it wouldn't have you know, stopped him from yelling at Chris Rock, but it would have stopped him. You know. Right. No, I don't think so. I think that he was a man on a mission. Did you see the way he walked there? Uh, that he, uh, And there was several steps. I mean, it doesn't matter how close or how far away. Think about this. You know, Bobby Slayton sometimes eviscerates mm -hmm. uh, uh, people in the front row. You never, ever sit at a Bobby Slayton show in the front row. Uh, you know, I, he's he's left me I, I, alone. I think if I asked Bobby about it, Bobby would say he's never been hit. Nobody ever no, came up that, and slugged No, that's right. Him. But this yeah. is this is uh, possibly uh, a new uh, phenomenon. Uh, you know, and, and now there isn't a lot of comedy going on now. But uh, you know, how could you know a heckler? You know, starts to get eviscerated by uh, the comic, and that's you know that's what they do. And Bobby's the best at it. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if if that happens, is somebody now going to have license to stand up, walk over, and slap the guy down? You know, and uh, I, I just uh, I just think this is a bad precedent. But I and yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah. that you know, all I'm saying is is that that I think that we're uh, the situation configured differently like it was in the past he would not yeah. have been able to get onto that stage and do it as easily as it was by just getting up off his seat walking forward stepping up one small step onto the stage you do you think he's a thug you know i mean his, oh, well, his i think i think what we've seen is the real will smith you know will smith yeah. is a very beloved comic 
I yeah. mean, he has a very high what they call Q rating. I mean, they people love this guy. Not today. No. Not today. He's lost that cachet, and he, he deserves to. I don't think you haul off and slug anybody under any circumstances. You know, yeah. especially for such... I mean, the, the, I don't think Chris Rock was out of out of line for making a joke about Jada Smith saying, "Hey, being GI G, G. Jane too." You know, yeah, she came to it with her hair completely cropped. He didn't know that it was because of alopecia. He thought she was just wearing that to be stylish. Even if it was, uh, you know, how I know it's. I'm sure it's, if I'm, he knew it was a medical condition, he wouldn't have made fun of it. Well, okay. that, that's a possibility. I thought it was a good joke. Was you know, fine. there was uh, nothing wrong with that it. Maybe wrong. that's, you know, she, that's the style that she had chosen for her hair. And to tell you the truth, I thought she looked very good. I thought she looked and, terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think there might have been other things going on in Will Smith's life that, uh, you know, wasn't, uh, uh, you know, hasn't been public. And, uh, you know, maybe he's under a certain pressure. Uh, he was obviously uh, distraught when he was receiving his award. Well, he was and, just distraught because he had already gone through this thing and embarrassed himself. Yeah. He was trying to save his ass during that acceptance speech, which went on forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I didn't give a crap about it. I'm trying to be the best person I can possibly be. Well, apparently you used to be the worst person you could possibly be. <laughs> and it and came it, out again. Then it came out again, you know. But, I mean, I mean, on the other hand, uh, you know, I've never been a big Chris Rock fan, although I, over the years, have warmed up more to him. It's like he, he, like I, I wasn't a big Amy Schumer fan till the other night, and I thought she did a pretty damn good job on that show. Oh, I didn't see it, but... Uh, yeah. uh, it, as far as Chris Rock goes, I understand his shows are now sold out, and instead of a hundred dollars a ticket, it's four hundred dollars a ticket. Well, there, yeah, uh, but also the the uh, uh, people who are selling, you know, scalpers tickets are charging a thousand. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's got a good jaw, and you know, I, I watched a uh, a um, a he got, guy. He got slapped hard. He didn't get hit. Yeah, you know. Well, you know, he went over. And and Will Smith's a big guy. But he didn't get go go over. He he, you know, he, maybe he flinched away from it. Or, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I would have. I would have dropped the little card, put my hands up, and blocked. You know, I mean. Uh, it, well, you know, you, to 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 Chris Rock's, uh, uh, what can we call it? To his to his uh, credit credit. Boy, I yeah. can't come up with words anymore. I got to stop taking this medicine. Uh, to his credit, uh, he handled it pretty well. Oh, you know? uh, with uh, uh, definitely with class. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. this is—I think it's going to help his career. Well, I think his career's been pretty good, but it's—it—he's yeah. it, starting to act a lot. And he's a very good actor. But anyway, I think he'll do any movies with Will Smith. Hmm. Now, do you think he'll do any movies? Yeah, he'll probably with do Will? Wild West three. <laughs> or G.I. Jane, too. Who knows? Yeah, really. You know. Hey, yeah. can you stick around tonight? Sure. Okay. He, uh, Phil is going to stick around with it. That's not so much a, uh, uh, a positive, but a threat. And <laughs> right. um, let me see here. We have some people here who are trying to get in. First, there's Charlie Wallace, and then there's Alan, and then there's Brian Neary. And uh, so we're we're off to uh, off to the races now. I want to bring up something, Phil, while the rest of them are here, mm-hmm. because if you didn't do it last week, do it this week. Have a drink. Oh, <laughs> what, uh, what what's the deal? Oh, you were talking about Russia, and uh, uh, um, it mm-hmm. seems as though that the. Uh, no, what it was, what that you said. That the Chinese. No, what you said is the Chinese were on the side of the Russians. Well, they, they said they would be. And they were going to come to the aid of the Russians. And right. the fact is that right after we had that conversation, the news came through that the Russians refused to send them a half a, half a billion Chinese. dollars. Chinese yeah, well, refused to the send Chinese, them half a billion dollars. The uh, Chinese uh, haven't been uh, giving them the support that the Russians thought that they would get. Mm-hmm. And uh, which is good, although there was a, an agreement and a handshake. And an, no, uh, that was to be that was uh, it, things that had to do with like Afghanistan versus Taiwan. Like if they didn't come after them for 
for for uh, <clears throat> Ukraine rather because Afghanistan. See me, you, Ukraine didn't go after them for Ukraine. They wouldn't come after them if they went after Taiwan. That was basically the deal. It wasn't any kind of a mutual. We'll come to your assistance. They, uh, Russia, uh, uh, China said that they would uh, stand by Russia uh, w without any equivocation. I mean, they they were well, they were they didn't say that. I haven't heard that. Right? You haven't heard that, right? You, because you guys it. don't listen to the real news. Uh, no, because they do watch the news <laughs> on a rather consistent basis, Phil, and they, yeah. uh, they're they able to absorb what it says, you know. But anyway, yeah. you were wrong. The Chinese don't want to have anything to do with Russia. No, because Russia's losing. Why would they want well, to they get also, they also don't want to. They also don't want to have any kind of, of, of economic <clears throat> sanctions against them. Because they, they don't want to ruin their economy. And, yeah. and what's Russia ever done for them? You know? Yeah. They were losing last week when you said that, too. Yeah. What? Yeah. A bunch of commies. Yeah. Phil's come up with excuses, but they are the same situation we were last week. Any of you guys have any feeling about the Chris Rock? Uh... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> After he said the joke, you see that picture of Will Smith was laughing, too. Laughing. And then his wife was not too happy so he got something and he should have slapped the guy that was sleeping with her like what six months ago yeah well here's the this deal guy yeah. i i thought they were divorced i thought they got no, divorced no, no, because no, she no, was no. playing around with everybody no, no you, you know what, you know what the story has been for years that she's a lesbian and he's a homosexual and they are kind of doing a uh, what can we call? It? What's the word we look for? Uh, uh, when some, Fake news. Uh, no, a beard. Out of convenience. convenience. Well, they're bi they're a beard for each other. That's been the rumors that have gone around for years. Oh, out okay. of convenience. But forget it. I think they really like each other, and I think they've had a fairly good relationship. But I I said on the Monday show that he's the biggest pussy whip man in America. Yeah. Because yep. he was laughing at that joke until right. his wife wasn't laughing at it. And they didn't show him, but I bet she threw him the stink eye. Like, how dare you laugh at that <laughs> joke? And so he felt he had to do something because he's pussy whipped. And he got up and slapped uh, um, uh, and Chris Rock. Rock. And, and did you see Ricky Gervais? Ricky Gervais, right after that, he posted something from the office. There was some joke running around about that That. That skin stuff, and he, Ricky Gervais went and posted that right away on on the internet. Ricky Gervais said something like he was lucky that they didn't come after him <laughs> for oh, some yeah. of the things that. Uh, said. Yes, uh, yes, Alan. So yesterday, Fox News posted yet another black on black crime. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Have you heard that uh, Kar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had a really good thing, and so yeah, did uh, right. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Jim Carrey had another good thing on there too. You know, same. Hollywood is spineless and stuff, so well, some, some people yeah, are coming but, out. No, what, what, what Kerry was complaining about, and rightly so, right, was that when nothing, nothing Will Smith fun. got up to get his award and he accepted it and he was finished with the speech, they gave him a standing ovation. Yeah. You know, and he felt that that was that was you know uh, a genuine. Well, yeah, but it was also uh, oh god, I can't come up with words anymore. This is mm -hmm. terrible. I got to stop this drug. It's, it's Could definitely... be like in giving Putin a standing ovation for invading yeah. Ukraine. Wait, right. For retreating, yeah. Well, oh, it, good. It, it was, Thank you for leaving now. The, appla yeah. the applauding was codependent, you yeah. know, yeah. is what it was. Yeah. yeah, it's like they were ignoring what happened, and uh, it, it seemed uh, hypocritical. Uh, you know, if uh, if this was a Me Too thing, they would have booed the guy, but... Uh, uh, now and what would have happened if uh, if it was a um, uh, what's his name uh, one Ricky Gervais yeah Ricky uh, or, or or somebody not a black mm -hmm. uh, to black but uh, a white guy like uh, um, I've seen that too I'm saying if, if it had been a white guy up there he never would have gone up and no 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 if the if the white guy got up and slapped the black guy that would have uh, really uh, oh, you know, hell yeah. been, uh yeah. People would have been up in arms, but because well, it was it, well the thing is that they nobody I, nobody has been saying this is like you know uh, a, a black uh, hatred thing or anything like that. You know, this is no. two black guys, you know, yeah, over I, a black I, woman, right? But it probably has no color 
uh, to, to it. I think it's just it was the mm-hmm. individuals and that there's uh, that this had no racist. Uh, no, it was definitely class times. because if I had gotten up and slapped Chris Rock, I'd be in jail. I'd have been in jail five minutes later. You wouldn't have made the mistake. Yeah, it's security would have jumped. Yeah, yeah it's, like it's, it's what I said earlier. Out. You wouldn't have been able to get to the stage, but right, he was right. within I maybe mean, 15 feet of Chris Rock because sure of that new, that, that new stupid seating arrangement they came up with. You That's know, where everybody's everybody sitting around having a, cocktails. A what? That's why everybody thought it was a put on because you know a, a, an act because he well, was so close to the stage. No, it's also I, the fault I, I, of the I, I, producers. I, I, the fault of the producers who wanted that thing to look like a quasi glo- Golden Globes. Yeah. Well, I uh, I watched this body language guy this morning that analyzed oh, uh, what was going I on. I heard. I saw and, him. He's full. And, and it wasn't fake, according to him. Well, no, we didn't. Yeah, know. Uh, it definitely was. Originally, yeah. originally, I thought it was a bit when just when it was yeah, happening, so did I. and then when they started yelling at each other and they were, you know, cutting the audio out, I went, "This ain't ain't a joke." That, that same body language guy looked at Trump and said, "This is a fake presidency." Trump already mm-hmm. said if he was in office, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, he did say that. Today. But, uh, but you know what? They, but, they do. They, I mean, they they've changed seating a little bit because of this whole COVID thing, right? So they did this sort of seating. I don't before. think it was you for know, COVID. Like, I don't think it was for COVID. But, I think they were trying they, to change the look of it. Is but they always see the people who are like, you know, even like the Grammys and all that stuff, all these, the hot, you know, the, 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 the hot trendy people then, they always sit them near the front, you know. So knowing that, you know, Will Smith was going to get the Best Actor Award and how that movie was, I think they already had him in prime seating anyways. Well, well you, know what, they, you know what, you know what Will Smith did do was take the heat off the producers of the Oscars for how terrible that show was. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was the... Did you see the in memoriam where they're singing? This one, people, for you know, pictures of people who died this year, yeah. to Norman Greenbaum's "Spirit in the Sky." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, oh. you know. The music was horrible. The music was uh, too much of it. Too much of it. Two of the numbers on the show were both from Encanto. They were both from the same movie. Oh. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the, I think the reason that they sat the uh, pe- uh, the, the uh, people that were nominated up close was that it cut down on the amount of time that it would take to get from their seat uh, to the to the stage to take their. I think they did it because they wanted to make it look more intimate. And the thing yeah. is, the great thing about the Oscars is they're not intimate. They're big. They're spectacular. They're huge. You know, and this turned it down to a, being a cocktail party. I agree with you, Alex, when you were talking to Phil earlier, or or maybe it was the other way around, that if you'd put him farther back in the crowd, he would have had to go through a bunch of people to go up to the stage. And I it think wouldn't it have been that happen. easy. It wouldn't you have know, been that Trump, easy. That's right. Trump, I, even if he were on the aisle, it wouldn't have been that easy because he still would have right. had to walk up some stairs and, you know. Yep. Trump predicted this. He says it's going to be huge. <laughs> yes. I like his hair color. Realistic. By the way, did you hear about your dear friend tonight, what he did? Uh, who, Trump? Yeah. No. Yeah. He, he got a hold of uh, Vladimir Putin. Oh. And asked him to look into Biden Hunt, Biden Hunt, uh, Biden, oh, yeah. Hunter, Hunter Biden. Biden. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Look into Hunter Biden. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't realize, Donald That's Trump doesn't on. realize there's a war going on. Yeah, he didn't realize that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, it would have been illegal for him uh, as uh, someone not in office to be able to uh, to to contact uh, uh, Putin, I would think. You know, that's the same thing. Uh, who was that general at the beginning of Trump's presidency uh, that uh, was in hot water because he spoke to uh, a Russian ambassador or a Russian yeah, ambassador? And, yeah. Uh, that put him in well, I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, it, it, it's um, it, it looks like uh, looks like Trump is in a lot of hot water. It looks like, know. you know, it, it's looking bad. You know, no, we'll, we'll see. Hey, you know that uh, uh, somebody else got. Oh, oh by the way, let me mention something quickly. Anybody knows anything different about me tonight? Different hat. No? Very bright. Oh, no air conditioner. That's right. Oh, God. yeah. <laughs> 
It's out the window. While you were talking to Phil. Yeah, the guy came and uh, and and got all his stuff. And one of the things were the air conditioners in the living room and the uh, the kitchen, which we never use, never use it, even the on the hottest day. We've got what, ceiling fans. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I got to tell you. Uh, it looks better, doesn't it? Huh? Isn't that, yes. Isn't that yeah, cool? I think so. Isn't that cool? Well, uh, yeah. Window air conditioners are never that uh, sexy. <laughs> you know no, what I mean, they don't make any that are decorative. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know who else got his uh, vaccine today? Who? Oh, Big Al, the kitty's pal. Oh, really? You got yours? Have you had yours yet? Yeah. Uh, 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 oh God, my Early. mind is just I just trashed. I notified Charlie. everybody that I knew. Charlie, I knew. Charlie, did you get yours today? I haven't gotten the fourth one yet, but mm -hmm. I, I got the third one. Yeah. How about you, John? You gonna go get your your? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have yeah. only had, you know I got the third one, but not the fourth. How, how long? Go, how long ago did you get the third one? Because they say you should. If you did it five months ago, that's fine. You know, but if you did it like a two months ago, no. What? I got mine in November, so I'm not due yet. Four months or longer. Four months or longer. Well, then you, you're you're up for it, right, uh, Charlie? You can do it. Yeah. Do oh, it yeah. anyway. Just get it, and then the next time they're going to say, "Well, now we need to get another one." You'll be right on schedule. Well, they yeah. they asked me if I was amino 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 compromised. Yeah. Amino compromised. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it, that's a, yeah. Yo. What would that What would that do to you if you were amino compromised? Uh, you'd, have no, yo. you'd have no amino acids in your body. Oh, I, I, I would get amino uh, acids al in alopecia. Immune. Probably alopecia, but uh, anyway, they said, uh, uh, "Do you, ha do you, are you, t are you actively uh, dealing with cancer?" So I said, "Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I take a pill twice a day. Yeah, I'm doing everything I can do to get it." Yeah, really. <laughs> And, uh, you know, because uh, I guess if you're not immunocompromised. I'm very uh, good. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they won't uh, they won't give you the amino. <laughs> they won't give you the amino. Yes, uh, Alan. Change the subject a little bit since we're bouncing around. Arizona governor today in the news. He signs a bill that bans most abortions after 15 weeks. Surprise. Hey, uh, talking about governors, what about in Florida? They uh, they just put a bill in that uh, uh, kids can't be uh, taught about it between kindergarten and third grade. I think they they can't mention uh, oh, right right. Well, that's, what, that's, that's the don't say gay bill. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Florida, yeah. But uh, you know, when I was in kindergarten to third grade. Well, you thought the other opposite sex had cooties. You, I, think, you I think they should. I think they should know from that stuff. I think, yeah. they, I think they should go to the governor's mansion in Florida, a thousand, two thousand strong, and all over and over again say gay, 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 yeah. gay. Well, they, they brought gay. it up on the Academy Awards. Two of the hosts said that it was it was wrong. Yeah, on the Academy Awards. I don't, I don't know. Do you think kids of that age can decide or think about their sexuality? They they haven't even developed uh, to to the point where they understand it. Well, that, that's the point. They're not. I mean, is there any evidence that any any schools are teaching kids about sexual orientation when they're in kindergarten? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. No, uh, I don't. I don't think they the... are. I don't think they are. And, no. and I, I I don't think they will until um, probably until they're. What maybe in sixth grade or something like that, or fifth grade? You know, some I didn't want my daughters dating the until they were forty. When, when they when they, they get to a bunch of students who are going basically going through adolescence or whatever you call it. Yeah, I'm puberty. I'm puberty. puberty. I'm bad on the English language. Please excuse me, folks. I don't know what's happening. They have a right. political group called the Republicans that go through <clears throat> kindergarten at age forty. Yeah, but, but that's, what I'm saying is, is if you're going through puberty, I think that's the time to have the conversation. All right. Now, yeah. it, hopefully, parents would do it at home, but pa most parents are chicken to talk about sex with their kids. That's yeah. why we treat, it, why we teach sex in the schools. Brian just wants to go tell his daughter. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, well, I mean, look, the time to, to 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 tell your kids about the facts of life is when they ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the time. My father said that was the time that he he held out that he he wouldn't tell me until I asked. 
So when I asked him at 30, yeah. <laughs> I was a very retarded kid. I think Jack, Jack is ringing a bell about now. <laughs> Let me see here. Where, where, oh, oh. yeah. So, I mean, um, you just wait for the kids to, the kid to ask you, you know. Uh, and then you give the, then you give them a straight answer. But a lot of parents can't. My, my youngest, when my youngest was in preschool, she came home one day and she said to me, "I know the difference between boys and girls." And I figured, "Oh God, I'm not ready for this." <laughs> right. And I says, "Okay, what's the difference?" She says, there. "Girls <laughs> sit down, boys stand up." Yeah. Do you know the difference between boys and girls? Hey, cool it. Cool it. We got hello. Do you know the difference between boys and girls? Yeah. Okay. What's the difference? And 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 a man can marry a woman, right? And a man can marry a man, right? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, right? Okay. That's it's okay. Did they Bravo. teach you that in school? Bravo. Very good. I teach you that at home. Yeah. Uh, kind of look for look for a sharp moment there like you were a ventriloquist. <laughs> no, because it's come up. It's come up with her. She, she said something before, and and we say, you know, I say, and that's okay, right? And she says yes, and I said that's awesome. So she well, she watches this thing. Yeah, but, it's called Dark Man. Dark Man. D D H R T or something. And it talks about all the it has all these stories about you know the nerd getting beat up in school or the girl the hot girl taking dark advantage man, of the nerd. Yeah, yeah Dark Man. Dark, and all these dark. stories, all these short stories that talk about good and bad. And she's been watching it for over a year. She really absorbs all that stuff, and it's it's really really good. She really understands the meaning behind those. And I'll ask her some questions, and let her explain those things. And she, yeah, so really good. Well, you know, if you you know, it's very good that you did that, and that you did it in the way that you did it. The question is, how many parents have the nerve yeah. to do what you did? Yeah, you know, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. They would. So that's why I think at a certain point schools have to teach it. They yeah. should do it at a time when they feel that if the kid the kids don't know about it at that point, then somebody should tell them. Yep. You know. Yeah. Um, and and what you're doing is you're you're also creating a very positive situation for her where she's going to have a good good feeling about when she sees a kid who has two parents who are the same sex. She's not going to even think it's <laughs> unusual. You know, and and it goes for race also. You know, because at our school, at her school, mm -hmm. a lot of Indian, a lot of Asian, a lot, a lot of white, and so you know, so she understands all that too. You know, we we've talked about some stuff and say, you know, everybody's the same, right? Everybody has two eyes, everybody has two legs, and you know, so I go through a lot of that stuff with her too. So she's she's really good, really really good kid. Wow. Some of us have fewer toes though. <laughs> I got a reminder about that one. Yeah, yeah. The, That's his mafia name, Charlie Toes. Uh, it, you know, I mean, I think it's really a, you know, I think it's, it. so that's the reason why we want to say gay in schools and why we want to have yeah. sex education in schools. Sure. But not early, when it's appropriate, when it's a time when everybody in that class should know about it, you know. Yeah, because if she, if, whatever situation it was that her and i started talking about that mm -hmm. if that situation never came up i wouldn't bring that up right now for sure and you know? this, but it was just yeah. something that came up and we were talking about that well in this day and age too kids are so precocious that they probably already learned about it in the schoolyard they may as well learn it from a place where they're getting the right information you know yeah. and well, we learned about gay when we were what what did you say Wait. sorry well, no. we, we learned about gay when we were young. All of us did, but we're all like, "You're gay, man! Stop, stop it, queer!" You know, we would use it as a bad I knew, term. I knew gay when you I know, was a child always, because my parents had two friends who used to come to dinner all the time, very close to my my parents, and they were both men. And finally, one day, I just said to my father, and I guess I was still very young at the time, uh, "What is the relationship between those two people?" And he said, "Well, you know how the relationship between your mommy and I." And I said, "Yeah." He said, same thing. And I understood it, you know, and then I assumed that they were just a couple. I said, he said, they love each other very much, just like your mom and dad do. And, and uh, uh, so I never, I never grew up with any, uh, any fear of, of gays. As a matter of fact, I often talk about how I grew up gay because, because I went to the symphony instead of a baseball game with my father and because uh, 
you know, I was in the theater and things like that, everybody called me a, you know, a, a homo or whatever they would call me. I forget the words now since this pill makes me forget stuff. Uh, homos, you know, I, I, you, you, know I, 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 you know, I, hey, Bennett, you queer or something? You know, and so I grew up kind of feeling that prejudice even though I wasn't. In fact, I wish I were a little bit gay because my heterosexuality got me into a lot of trouble over the years. <laughs> four <laughs> marriages, count them, that, that four, four marriages. And by the way, tomorrow is my wife's last day at her job. Oh, oh retirement. Well, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not exactly retirement. She's getting paid 25% salary for the next two years, and we're covered by their insurance. Oh. So that's okay by me, you know. Yeah. My son's first day of, of work was today. Oh, really? Oh, Bask wow. Baskin Robbins. Oh, I, th I Robbins. thought you were going to say he got my wife's job. No, yeah. <laughs> asking Robin. So we knew he was training today. Yeah. So we happened to be out and about and we're coming home. And so we stopped there and we all said, it was Adrian and Tiffany and I, and we said, we're going to, we're going to pretend like we don't know him. So we walked in there and he was being trained. I took a quick picture. And so he just looked over, he's being trained with his best friend, with the manager, I guess. And we walked in and we got some of the courts and we're leaving, just pretend like we don't know him. And we told Adrian, don't say anything. And so right when we're leaving, I said, bye, Simon. <laughs> we walked out the door. Did you leave a tip? <laughs> oh, he was training. Oh, yeah, but they got a tip it, chart. That, that's the that. answer, Phil. No. Yeah. <laughs> they were training. He stiffed his own son. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, let's see here. Trump called uh, called uh, 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 Putin Putin, and said to him that he wanted or asked. I don't know if he wrote. I think he actually called him. What was in the news? Uh, no. Huh? It was, it was interview on some right wing podcast. And he said, oh, uh, Putin should uh, tell us about Biden's son getting three million dollars from the mayor of Russia. I was like, what? Where did that shit come from? Well, the mayor of, from the mayor of Russia? Yeah. Mayor of Russia's wife gave yeah. him a million dollars. Three point yeah. five million. Three and a half million. Three and a half million. Wait a minute. The mayor of a mayor? The, there is no mayor of Russia. Mayor of Moscow. Oh. Yeah. The mayor of Moscow's wife. Gave uh, Hunter Biden three and a half million dollars. And by the way, sure. it's pronounced it's good in bed, man. It's pronounced Moscow. Okay. Moscow. Moscow, no, yeah. Yeah, it's Moscow. And, and it's a drink Russia. named after that. It's a Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule. And, and, and there's a firebomb named after that. And by the way, that's pronounced Mule. <laughs> Actually, in Russian, it's Moskva. Moskva? Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Yeah, right. It's Moskva. I, I think Charlie uh, speaks Russian. Or he, he, he used to. He used, yeah. 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 Uh, for, did you was, see that uh, show, The Americans? Were you one of those guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, I love watch that. Show. Watch that show. Yeah, yeah. I almost relearned like Russian watching that. Yeah, I'll tell you, I consider Russian a very sexy language. You know, some, some of those Ukrainian chicks are hot. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You only like the ones with blood on them, though. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no there's, there's some Hell. blonde Ukrainian chickses, and they are cute. Well, there be a lot of Jews in Ukraine. Yeah, a lot of now, Jews. The president of Ukraine is Jewish. Yeah, yeah, and a comedian. Do you think anybody's going to slap him? I don't know, but but Putin's trying to. Yeah, really. You know, um, uh, it's uh, it's it's not getting good for Putin. I mean, they, it, I'm so happy that this country, which he thought he could just waltz into and take over, and it'd be an easy thing turned out to be his Waterloo, you know, yeah. and and uh, it's it's cost him back home with the perception of him, no matter what the news people are saying. And it is uh, it's 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 an expensive proposition for him, both in human lives and in uh, in treasure. Let's he, he's 17,000 Russians dead in this thing, well, not anywhere near do. that in Ukrainians, you know. Uh, but I mean, it's it, it's time for him to get out. And they said today that he's been given constant bad information by his military yeah. people who are too afraid to tell him the truth. 
he's going to end up shooting them. Yeah. No, but that's what happens if you Wait, try no. to be a strong arm leader. When it comes to yeah. times like this, and you need to have people tell you, hey, it's not going well, right? Yeah. You, you should know that. But if they're afraid to tell you that, you you remember the story uh the emperor has no clothes this is just just you like know the, that you know the story of stalin that when he was yeah. dying he'd had a stroke or something they said which one of you want to go get a doctor well i don't know you want to draw straws on that i don't know let's let, wait a minute top. let's hold back let's discuss this now who wants to go get the doctor and what and, doctor would and what they never the called a doctor for him. They just let him lie they there and die. They had, killed them all. Huh? they had killed all the doctors. There was no well, doctors but, left. But <laughs> still, they could have gotten him some kind of help, and maybe he could, his life could have been saved, but they didn't. And that's exactly what's going to happen to Putin. If Putin suddenly gets that big stroke, they're not going to call the hospital to take him away. Yeah. They're going to say they're going to draw straws first. You know, uh, they, and they probably have the nine one one system like we do, and mm -hmm. somebody's not going to be able to find the eleven on the phone. <laughs> and they they had a they had one of the um, Russian guys, right? One of the Putin's guys. They think he's he was poisoned. Not not the guy who was running against him, but I'm talking about a couple of days ago. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there was a sort of a Ukraine sympathist or something. So yeah, well, it was, it was an oligarch that was talking to the Ukrainians. Yeah, without, yeah, yeah. Without Putin's permission. And he ended up dead. No, he did. They got pretty sick, and they were pretty sure he was poisoned. Yeah. Well, so they all those guys don't want to touch any surfaces or anything. Well, right well there was one guy who was a critic of Putin's that got poisoned not once. Mm -hmm. but then he went back to Russia and got poisoned a second time, and then he went back again, and now he was thrown in jail. Yeah. Well, if you need a job, you could become a food taster in Russia. You know, uh, I bet you it pays well. Yeah, well, I would imagine. Yeah, and you better have some kind of anti serum or something yeah, available really. uh, after that happens. But what a world we live in. But you know what bothers me, I think, about this whole Chris Rock thing is that with all that's going on in the world, that's the big news. Yeah. That suddenly becomes a story that won't die. You know, I mean, maybe a part of the reason why I think it was a big story. And, and the news tended to report it a lot, was it was a story that we were witness to, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So we then, they then feel the public has a vested interest in the story. So that, may, that would make a little bit of sense, I think. And we actually saw it live. Yeah. And they were trying to cover up Hunter Biden's laptop that uh, it turns out that they were legitimate, but now with this news story, Maybe uh, it they won't be talking about uh, Biden, the Biden family, and all I, I, of those I, other things. I, I think no, no, that no, no. the Republicans There's found no, that Hunter Biden did have a laptop. There's no reason. Oh, it, your it, audio it, isn't working, uh, uh, Alan. You're muted. Really? <laughs> Why did he that, say? And that's your friend, Alan. Just remember that. Okay? Yeah, that's your friend. That's <laughs> Wait, a, he's only bye. your friend because he'll buy you dinner. That's why, Alan. Admit it. Or, or ammo. Hunter Biden what, does not what exactly office, what, 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 what'd you what say exactly you? did Hunter B Biden do wrong except just take money you know from people that were willing to give him money I, I, I guess there was um, uh, things about 10 percent to the big guy and uh, using uh, uh, no uh, no that's what you hear Biden we're not talking about you. Hunter Biden you're talking about Trump now and to using Biden's position as vice president to, uh, because to the vice president has so much power. No, right. well, he did in that case, especially in Ukraine. You well, know, the, point, the point was vice president in Ukraine. Yeah, well, uh, you, you know, all you're listening to are are rumors, Phil. There's yeah. no, there's no, nothing's been proven. No, that's about, not true. I also listen to innuendo. <laughs> I mean, hey, he actually knew how to say that word. He, you can't just accuse me of listening to rumors. I'd like to so shove far. this up your innuendo. <laughs> hey, I don't have a prostate. I don't need that. Yeah, but I do proudly. It's flat, yeah. but it's a prostate nonetheless. Yeah. I thought the about my why but... Phil didn't lose any weight is the average prostate weighs between 30 and 45 grams. 
Yeah, but oh, mine a, was like 135 grams. Was it really? I had something big. That was the only thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's like an ounce, ounce and a half for an average prostate. So For an average prostate, yeah. Well, yeah. well my prostate is uh, A-OK -okay right now. I have no a non-detectable uh, non PSA. So. I find uh -oh. that out. Huh? Some woman... Yeah. There was some woman in the Ukraine that was giving Russian soldiers sunflower seeds. Yeah, no, that, no, I saw that. It was a very yeah. famous, uh, a famous video of a right. woman saying, "Here, here's some uh, sunflower seeds. Put them in your pocket so that when you're dead, you'll at least sprout sunflowers." You know, right? You know, so yeah, <laughs> I know you got seeds in your prostate, but <laughs> they weren't sunflower seeds. Oh. They were sunflower seed shells. That's what they were. Yeah. Well, you ate you ate the sunflower seed. Well, what's funny is that uh, you know, I mean, I'm just I'm just delighted that you know that it's been two years now, uh, and at two years they kind of they say with uh, with seed implantation and stuff like that, if you if you don't get a detectable, even a low detectable, but you don't get a detectable, they they consider that pretty much a cure. So. Yeah, I'm well, not on wood, but you know, I think I'm, isn't it after five years uh, you uh, of being cancer? -free five years that, is the number of years they give on most of these things uh, as a uh, how can I put it as a uh, a limit a, a survival rate number. It doesn't have to do with you're cured. Uh, you know, in some cases they say you're never cured. You could always, it could always come back. Blah 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 blah. In other cases, they do say you're cured. Am I right about that, uh, uh, Jeff? Because you know about medical stuff. What? You're, you're, uh, you're muted. You're, you're no really muted. muted. you got to turn your mic <laughs> <Muted>. on. <laughs> Not like Alan, who should be muted. Gee. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm on now. Yeah. Um, I just recently went through this whole series, and the reason was about 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I had a stroke. Okay. Mm -hmm. And was it that was long thinking, ago now? Uh, yeah. Jeff? Wow. And and I was taking certain drugs. And I don't know what it was about a year ago or so. Uh, I was falling asleep easily. And the doctor says, "Well, you know, you ought to stop taking those pills. They're kind of like old and." And, and they're not going to hurt you. Well, sure as shit. I was uh, having some sleeping problems again. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, I'm at the hospital. And they're asking me questions. When's this? Just recently? Just Monday. Monday. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to uh, answer the, these questions. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't come out with the words mm. at all. I couldn't like say you that. had a stroke again. Yeah, yeah, I would call it a uh, it's a mini stroke. Yeah, a seizure. A seizure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hail yeah. Caesar, Caesars. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I turned forty, like Jeff, I got to look forward to all this stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay now, Jeff? Yeah, I think I'm going pretty did they, good. Uh, did they feel you had a stroke or something? or nah, a seizure. Jeff, it could have been sleep apnea or something like that. that no, 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 you know what they said is because of the original stroke stuff, there's certain uh, parts of the body that can clot and unclot and and do things that so they, they put you on some blood thinners or something so they gave yeah. me a, a new drug uh, that'll prevent that okay good. 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 good good so we'll see if this works out. <clears throat> yeah did you hear about bruce willis yeah bruce oh, willis yeah yeah, yeah. he uh, he's he, he's he, he's in good he's out of, he's out of acting right for the time being yeah. And he has a, um, uh, was, was, what was it called? Like Alzheimer's, isn't no, it? No, it's not no. Alzheimer's, no. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a thing where uh, he can't remember words or Yeah, or like I'm having tonight. Yeah. 
Like dementia. No, well, no, no, I'm no. Not Bennett that. disease. It it starts with an A. Aphasia. To, aphasia. 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 Uh, and yeah, it could uh, happen because he might have had a stroke, you know, and, and that's yeah. what caused the aphasia. Or it could be caused by several other things that have nothing to do with the stroke. But in any event, he has aphasia. He can't remember words. Uh, it, it, it says that it's a condition that affects the ability to communicate. <laughs> Which I, I, I thought Alan just said that. Yeah, I got it. Right, well, <laughs> yeah, I just said that. That, that sounds like dementia. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 He he doesn't know how to remember. remember words, uh, which is a form of not being able to communicate, Phil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean, it's sad. You know, I'm I'm having trouble finding words. I'm wondering if I've had a small stroke or something, but I doubt it. Yeah. You, know. you know, Marjorie said to me after I came back with my positive. Uh, test the other day. Yes. What's going to be the problem now? Now. What's going to be your latest? Sure. What's going to be your latest problem? I said, well, my hand still hurts. Yeah, you it's know. the problem du jour. I mean, are you hand. using that exercise thing? No. You should. Uh, It'll help. Do you think you could get a discount at, on off your rent now that you're? Uh, a ADA, the American Disabilities Act, because wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm getting my rent for five hundred dollars a month. How much more can they lower it? That's right. They can pay you. Right there, you go. I agree with Phil. They should. Now, Alan's a landlord. He, he do you pay your uh, tenants to stay? No. Oh, okay. So you know, you why would you want you know as a landlord? Why would you want everybody to give away rent? I people like you and and you're in the Taylor. same business you're in the same business as Trump he's a landlord well Marjorie's a landlord as you know yeah. right uh and but she's been she when when the uh, uh, pandemic came along I've got to stop this drug when the pandemic came along uh she uh lowered the rent for her tenant tenants and and um, I, I said that's that was really nice of you, you know. She said, yeah, he's a music teacher and he couldn't teach music a lot because you know, the pandemic and people not being able to get close and so on. And I said, fine, that's great. So the other day I said to her, so uh, you ch going back to charging him the regular rent? And he, she said, no, I'm still charging him what I was charging him. And I said, all of a sudden I felt like the horrible landlord. I went. <laughs> Really? You really should start charging them again what you were charging them before because it's over with now. You know? Oh well, I don't want to do that. I see I, you can't I be know, a, you I, can't be a just you can be a nice landlord, but you can't be a stupid landlord, you know? It's like government. Once you institute a tax, you never take it away. Mm -hmm. And you know, what whenever you give uh, some sort of subsidy it's very difficult to take it away. They just keep, you know, renewing right. the subsidy. And, uh, you know, so, you know, now the guy is accustomed to paying a certain amount of rent. And then when you go to raise it, they. Did you, they see, feel did you see about these people out in California who were taking the government during uh, the pandemic when people were getting like uh, extra money for uh, the fact that there was a pandemic and they couldn't work and stuff. And so they yeah. <laughs> handed in the government something like thousands upon thousands of, uh, of, of claims that of, for people who didn't exist yeah. and made millions upon millions of dollars off of it. Yeah, and they're now, where are they now? In the big house. I, some of them went to a foreign country. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they got all their money over there. They said they won't, the government won't be able to reclaim a lot of that money. I wow. find, feel that if you can find them, you should shoot them. Oh, I don't know. Aren't these people the people that filled out ballots for Trump in 2016? No, they're the ones that filled out ballots for Biden. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I have to right. change the yeah. subject, but they're look at California. Yeah. Like, look at that. What? Oh, what? Yeah. What? Jury duty. What? what? I, every two years, I get jury duty. I don't know why. Yeah. Stop voting. They like you, John. You live in the right zip code. Hey, John, just stop voting, and they won't call you to jury duty so no that's just one more democrat down the road 
<laughs> well, for years I kept getting jury duty notices. I just never answered them because it didn't come, you know, certified, certified or anything like that. So how do they know I got it? You know. Right. But finally, they just kept coming after me and coming after me, and then they did do certified or something like that. So I had to go down and be part of, you know, jury duty. So in California, the way they get your jury duty stuff is off of two areas, driver's licenses and voter ID. Yeah. So if you do like, I'm assuming you don't drive, John, and if you do like Phil said, stop voting, you probably well, won't I, get it. I think they should do it for driver's license, you know, driver's licenses, but I don't think they should do it for voting because that's going to inhibit some people from voting. No. Nope. Being like illegals? No. In California, they can't vote anyway, can vote, can't they? They do, right? Uh, do do illegals vote? Do you know an illegal? Well, they don't vote. Do you know yeah. illegals yeah. vote for Biden? Do you know an illegal who votes? No, but I know illegals. Can you have can you can, can you supply us with a name? Alan Ween, <laughs> Phil Meyer, Phil L Meyer. Most illegals won't do anything to call attention to themselves because they don't want to get deported. Yeah. So if you don't register to vote, you're not going to be noticed. Maybe. Well, Phil, you stumbled there. You know that's that's good logic. Right. Well, I, I was the one that suggested to the Democrat on the panel, don't register to vote. Don't vote. And then they won't call you to jury duty. But, you know, you got to weigh, you know, vote, jury duty, you know. <laughs> They uh, never pick me anyway, so it never bothered me to go in for jury duty. They don't Honey, pick they me don't they pick won't us pick either. Alan. They won't pick Alan, then they won't pick me. No. When well, I my, fill my, out my questionnaire, I'm going to tell them. What should I tell them? Um, that you, know, be, you know cops. Well, I got, I, no, in doing, in, do, in doing uh, uh, jury duty, I got to meet Steven Soderbergh. So, you know. It was, but he got off. He got off, and then I got off because I said that I didn't want to be put in the position of having to pass judgment on a on a drug dealer because i because i felt that that the the crime itself was basically uh a, a, a medical crime rather than a you know a criminal crime and the judge said well next and after Soderbergh got off he was sitting there and he said to me uh boy that was a flimsy excuse and i said yours that you were making a movie in cuba wasn't <laughs> Brian had his hand up. Yes, Brian. Kill them all and let, let God sort them out. That's all you need to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. One, of my old, one of my old engineers I worked for I, I, I just said, all the time. I just said I don't believe drugs should be a crime. And he said, uh, next, you know, that's it. Goodbye. You're dismissed. Yeah, and, when Phil and I go there and they say, uh, do you believe that this you, you could be fair with this guy? And I always say, if the police arrest him, he must be guilty. <laughs> well, I said the next time they called me again, I had turned 75, and I said, I'm 75, blow me. You know, because once you turn 75 in New York, you don't have to do jury duty, unless you want to. 70 in Texas. Really? Yeah, yeah. 70 in California, too. But then again, as we all know, that the uh, age of uh, consent in Texas is 13. So, yeah. you know, I mean. I thought that was Arkansas. Oh my God, they they just and they just uh, sentenced a um, um, uh, middle school not this uh, not ours but the one next door at Dartmouth. Uh, a guy was sexually abusing two girls during junior high years. This is about uh, five or ten years ago, mm -hmm. and a uh, hundred and two million dollars, seventy nine million dollars that the that the school district has to come up with to give these two girls. Really? Wow. wow. Yeah, it's like I don't know how they come up with money, but because they said that they were, yeah, they, they tax money. Stuff to go on There's and on. a real uh, dividing line here between abuse and prostitution. How much do <laughs> you know, the I mean, women <laughs> teachers and and you know high, the women high school teachers? How much were the settlements for them that you know hit hit the fourteen year old boys with sex? And you want to know like something? I, I often said, what what crime was committed there? If you guys, you're all guys, okay, and you're all straight guys here, all right, I assume, uh, and, and you were like 14 and you had a really hot teacher come on to you and show you the ways of the world, would yeah. you complain about it? 
No. No, but they can't no. keep their mouths shut. That's the problem. Well, their jealous friends can't keep their mouths shut. <laughs> well, here's That's the right. thing, though. What I said was the worst thing that can happen to these boys was a chafed hands from all the high-fiving. <laughs> you know, I, I just never... And did you notice that all those teachers in Florida were hot? Mm -hmm. Hot, of course. You know? Even it, Letourneau and... Uh, you know, Laterno was okay. Yeah, but the, there yeah. was one woman in Texas that was just so hot it was ridiculous. And you know, I mean, she should have gotten an award for indoctrinating a kid into the ways of sex. The worst part about it was that's the best it would ever be for him. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yep. All yep. downhill from there. All yep. downhill from there. Give up on sex. Either that, become gay, do something else. You know. Just spend the majority of your time I had the best, now I can't do that again. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do better than that. You know, so. Has, has anybody in our group here mm -hmm. gone on vacation to other countries? Well, I've, 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 uh, like recently, you say? Yeah. No, no, Marjorie and I would probably like to. We don't, I talked to a we, friend of mine. We don't have as much money to do it with now after paying this one guy seventy five thousand yeah. dollars and so on. But still, you know, I've I've got it, and and I would really like to. We'd really like to take a vacation. I, I got a friend. Light it up, John. I talked to last night on Facebook. He's in the Dominican Republic, and uh, he's staying in a resort. He says it's costing him two hundred and fifty dollars a day in an all inclusive resort in paradise and he says i can't live that cheap he was living in new york his rent was 15 grand a month when he was in new york <laughs> uh there was a flood in his apartment and he had to move out and uh so he said you know hey look you know i'm just spending seven grand a month now and it's all inclusive and you know all you can drink all you can eat and uh sports and you know, so he's he's digging the. Well, the only problem with going on a vacation right now is plane yeah. fare is incredibly expensive, and the hotels would be incredibly expensive <clears throat> where we well, want to go. You know, you know so uh, this Dominican Republic thing looked pretty nice, but I don't know if you're into the tropics and stuff like I that. I don't want to go to the Dominican Republic. Why were you yeah. asking, Jeff? Yeah, why were you asking, Jeff? Well, I was trying to see my my son just got back from from uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. For like uh, ten days or something. And how expensive was With it? With his girlfriend, I don't know. They're gonna find out when their credit card bill comes at the end of the month, right? Yeah, now. but they had a great time. Which I know really? that. Well, yeah, well, right. I mean, you know, we'd love to do something like that, but uh, you know, it's just it's just <clears throat> very expensive right now. It's for, it's expensive everywhere. If I if I got oh, on a plane and went to California, it would cost me a fortune. <laughs> By the way, I want to ask. Uh, I, I wanted to ask him earlier, but John, you live in the uh, in the uh, Tenderloin in yeah, San Francisco, yeah. and they mm -hmm. said that is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods now in San Francisco. Yes, it, it is. Um, if you if you're hanging around on the streets dealing drugs, but you know, I mean, I live here. Nobody hassles me. I don't go out in the middle of the night hanging looking for crack. Uh, you know. Yeah. But but, but, um, but but they say that right now they, they had a list on uh, YouTube, because I watch YouTube a lot, about the 10 worst cities in America. And number 10 was New York, okay? Number five was San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. Um, they, they said some parts of San Francisco are bad, but most of it's very nice. No, but they, Alan, no, but they said, uh, no, other things were ta being taken into consideration. Cost of apartments. You know, mm -hmm. Cost of living, things like that. Right. They say it's very expensive in San Francisco. Yeah, the whole Bay Area. Hey, Alan, mm -hmm. uh, you remember that uh, you you saved a woman cop. Was that in the Tenderloin? No, uh, no. It was uh -huh. in the Mission. Oh, in San Francisco, on mm -hmm. Treat Street. Look it up, Phil. Runs between yeah 16th and 18th along Harrison. That's the toothless ho to toothless hooker. Street. Well, that's probably why Alan was cruising there, and that's probably and why, why it's called Treat Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. Alan was cruising, and there was a woman cop getting beat up by a big guy, and Alan actually got out of the car and and uh, subdued the the big guy and called for uh, an ambulance for the cop who was getting. Uh, well, bravo for you. 
It was that a lot, how long female, ago? I, I actually drove around the block. This is about 10 years ago. I drove around the block and saw the car there, the police car with the, with the passenger's door open, but there was nobody around. So I figured, eh, must have been a foot pursuit or something like that. And, you know, it, but the, nothing's open around there at midnight or one in the morning, whatever time mm-hmm. it was. So I came back around and thought, okay, I'll go check on. And as I got out of my vehicle and walked up on the sidewalk, this big guy was taking this female officer and, and slamming her head into oh. the concrete. So I went up and choked the guy out, which I was trained to do. It's illegal in San Francisco, but I didn't give a shit, and they didn't give a shit either. And then grabbed her handcuffs. She was barely conscious. Handcuffed the guy and got on her radio and called for help. Wow. Wow. Oh. And they claim, you know, the doctors told me later on that I saved her life. One more an hit award. on the concrete would have killed her. Yeah, you got an award. Yeah, accommodation. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Good work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good for you. Yeah, but most people would have never saw that as a, as something strange. You know, it comes with comes with police work. Phil probably would have done the same thing. Yes. He probably would have saw it and said, Yep, there's no hookers in this neighborhood. I think I'll drive around one more time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, a- anyway, but I just hear that San Francisco is not not a walk in the park anymore. No, yeah. it's really gone downhill, especially since the pandemic. Everything's closed. There's yep. nothing. You go yeah. there and everything is closed. You're right, John. I was there last weekend. Boring. New hey, York is a, New, York, New York is no oh, walk wow. in the park now. Well, there is a park here. We can walk in it, but there's no. It's no walk in the park. Uh, but uh, you know, part of the problem that we have here is uh, the 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 cost of rents is enormous. Okay, mm-hmm. although you couldn't prove it by me, uh, but they're enormous. And even if I were paying the, the higher price on this apartment, it still wouldn't be close to that. Okay, average rental I think here in New York for a one bedroom apartment is over three thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but there are a lot of other problems too, like this mayor of ours is just doing some crappy stuff. How is that? What well, is he doing? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, and then we're going to have to go. for Curtis Sliwa. Sliwa. No, th- what he did was he allowed uh, the uh, people who are wearing, who are, who are not, don't want to be, vac- aren't vaccinated and don't wear masks to play oh. sports and engage in entertainment. However, right. If you are a person like a cop or a nurse or a doctor or whatever, anybody that deals with the public, you have to be vaccinated. Right. And everybody is really pissed about that because why should they get off the hook? Because they're sports people, I mean, of all things, and entertainers. And, and uh, they don't contribute to the welfare of the city like other people. They should have to get vaccinated Absolute just like anybody else. Are public servants, and I think that the... The mayor uh, has uh, is is not that he's justified, but he can demand he, he, that they he, get. Yes, vaccine. he is justified in that. I don't disagree with you, but you that doesn't have. justify him exempting sports personalities. Right. Like we have this Kylie Irving, or whatever his name is, he's a back basketball player, refused to get his shot so that he hasn't been able to play. Now he can play again. Screw him. He should never get to play ever again. But they're saying he can play in another town, but he can't play in New York. Well, because the other towns don't have the same rules. But what I'm saying is that that doesn't make it right, okay? The fact is, he wouldn't get a shot. He didn't care about anybody around him. He can go screw himself. I don't care if he is a basketball player. But anyway, that's for another day. Hey, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. You hanging around here. Pleasure. Uh, same to you, Alan. Good having you here. Charlie, always, always, you know, a pleasure. Brian, you're one of my favorites of all time. Okay. Uh, and John Larkin, great to see you again. And, of course, Jeff, give a big wave goodbye, everybody. I'll give a big wave goodbye, too. Okay. All right. Here we go. There we go. I can gain a big wave goodbye, and then we'll fade to me. Okay. There we are. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our... Uh, citizen panel for tonight there'll be another one convening right after this program on jack bishop's intersection over most of this same gabnet and you can participate in that just by calling with gabnet live i'll see you again tomorrow night yeah of course same time same station in life and in the meantime as always 
If you see her, tell her I love her. And if you get a chance, get that fourth booster shot. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Good night, everybody. Bye.